so in today's video, we're going to talk about how we can go about attracting a soulmate. And I am very intentionally saying attract a soulmate and not find a soulmate because when you're out there looking to find something, you probably won't find it. But if you're just living your life in this sort of way, then your soulmate will come along, I guarantee it. So the first thing you need to do in order to find a soulmate is deprogram yourself. All of those years that you watched Disney movies or fairy tales or romantic comedies, you need to undo all of the damage because all of those things set up really unrealistic ideas of what a soulmate relationship is actually like. So if you believe that there's only one soulmate in life and you only love ones, then there, that's a chance that you probably need to deprogram yourself. If you believe that your ex is your soulmate and they no longer want to be with you they're actually with somebody else and they're moving on and you're still attached to that one person guess what you need to deprogram yourself because there is a reason why that person didn't make it into your present and your future okay they're not your soulmate and you're blocking yourself from meeting your actual soulmate or meeting another soulmate by staying attached to the past and lastly if you believe that when you find your soulmate, everything is going to be perfect. Your whole life's going to be perfect. That person's going to be absolutely perfect for you. If you think that that's what a soulmate is, then I have news for you. You're, if you believe that, then you're a little baby and you need to grow up and, and deprogram yourself. The second thing you need to do, and these two steps are probably interchangeable, probably. The second thing you need to do is actually get to know yourself. Get to know what it is that you like in yourself and in other people. Take some time to actually self-reflect and figure out kind of like what are your faults? What are your weaknesses? And essentially, you know, when you actually find your soulmate, it's somebody who has things that are like you and also things that are completely opposite from you because when two soulmates come together, there's an element of sameness. So like, like attracts like, but there's also a balancing element that that other person is going to bring into your life. It's not so much that they complete you. It is that they make you a better version of yourself. And you're not going to know what things balance you if you don't actually know what your natural inclinations are. So take some time to self-reflect. This is where, this is my shameless astrology plug. This is where astrology is so useful because astrology is an objective way of seeing what our traumas are, what our pains are, what our faults are. And I say it's objective because the planets aren't people. The planets aren't judging you. The planets are just doing their thing. And if you have an educated eye, then you can look at your planets and be like, hey, you know, I got a lot of planets in the 12th house. I got a lot of planets in the eighth house. My moon is an aspect to Pluto. Then all of those things can be clues that you have certain things to work on. And so I really recommend that you self-reflect using astrology or maybe go to therapy, go to a psychotherapist. Whatever way feels easiest and most comfortable, most accessible to you, that is the way you should do it. And that's why I always say astrology is a really great way of self-reflecting because astrology, you can go on Google and put free astrology chart calculator and you can get a free chart. And even though you don't know enough astrology to do your own reading, maybe you can't afford a reading and that's fine. You could still absolutely self-reflect for free using astrology because you could look at your moon sign and go on the Google machine and put moon in Scorpio, or you can come on YouTube and you know, I have hundreds of videos on all of the placements. So you can watch one of my videos, watch somebody else's video, watch all of the videos that there are on Scorpio moon, highly recommended if you're a Scorpio moon, or if you have a Pluto moon, highly recommend that is part of your work as a human being. Get to know what your weaknesses are, what your pain points are, so that when you find that person, you can be authentically yourself and anything that they see within you will not be something that's gonna surprise you because they're gonna see the real you. Your soulmate will see who you actually really are. And if you haven't taken the time to self-reflect, maybe if they point something out to you that you didn't know about yourself, you might get pissed off. You might be like, this person's crazy. I totally disagree with them. I like them a lot, but then they point to this thing out and it's just not true. You're probably a Neptune if, if that's the case. But if you take some time to self-reflect and really get to know yourself in an objective way. And I also say that astrology is an objective way of self-reflecting because sometimes when, let's just say you have a friend and they're a Virgo and they're always just like, hey, like you kind of do this thing all the time that's really shitty. Like you're always late and you have this character trait of lateness. You're always late and it really bothers me. And you're like, 
well, it's not true. I'm not always late. That's not true. And you could be kind of defensive about your faults or your weaknesses. But when you're, when you get an astrology reading from an astrologer, that person doesn't know you. They're not telling you something in order to hurt you or harm you or make you feel bad about yourself. And even if you don't get it from an astrologer and you just get it from the internet, like a free reading, then that is just you reading what the internet generated for you, right? It's just somebody's opinion about an element within your chart. So it's not going to hurt. Another great way to self-reflect is to journal. Use free journal prompts. Ask yourself questions and just let yourself write and write and write for a few minutes every day from five to ten minutes. And trust me, you're going to get to know yourself if you get to write. Step number three is that you have to be open. You have to be open. And what I mean by that is not only do you have to be open to meeting new people, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be have your heart open in order to really find a connection that is authentic and true at the soulmate level. Because if you want to get to know a soulmate, then you have to bear your soul. You can't have a soulmate if you're not vulnerable with them, if you're not showing them who you really are, if you're not showing them the depths of who you are. And the, the reason for this is because you cannot be loved completely if you don't show who you are completely. If there are aspects of you that you hide from the other person that you're meeting, then that person doesn't have an opportunity to show you that, hey, like I love you for all of you. I love every part of you. I love your lightness and I love your dark because yes, everybody has darkness within them. All these love and light people that are just like positivity all the time, nonsense. And also like people who are super petty that, that neither of those two things, we all have the duality within us. We have darkness and light. Right? We need to be comfortable with our darkness and be comfortable enough to show that to somebody else. And I don't mean be a dickhead. Don't be a dickhead to other people. Don't be a dickhead to your soulmate. Like, what are you doing? You could lose them. You could lose them if you're a dickhead. You know, sometimes the darkness seeps out of us. And if it's something that you're familiar with, that you're aware of, you can work on it if you have self-reflected already, if you maybe went to therapy or you read about those things that I told you about in the previous step. But you'll be comfortable to be open with that person and show them who they're re who they really are and then you give them the opportunity to really be there for you and to really see you and to really you know give you your room to be who you are and to love you an article on psychology today had this to say about soulmates the depth of an intimate relationship is dependent upon the ability and desire of each person to expose the inmost self as well as the ability and desire to discern, interact with, and accept what is exposed. So we have to have, first of all, I said, you have to be open. If you are not willing to be open, first of all, if you're not willing to do that, then you probably don't have the maturity to find a soulmate. And you have to really figure out if protecting yourself and staying protected and small is worth losing a soulmate potentially or losing the uh, the possibility of making a soulmate type connection because i've said it before and i'll say it again you have to risk it for the biscuit so you have to risk getting your heart broken you have to risk getting rejected in order to have that beautifully delicious buttery biscuit that is the soulmate connection you have to have that desire and that ability to accept and love whatever it is that the other person exposes about themselves. It's very, very important because not only do you have to be open and the person has to be open, but you also have to be willing to accept whatever is shown to you. If you reject a person for they for their darkness or for the things that you learned about them, then you're probably not soulmates. Step number four is that you have to be available and curious about the world. And this is a little different from being open. Number three was about being emotionally open, like vulnerable. And number four is you have to be curious about the world because if you spend all your time in your house, you never leave the house, you never go anywhere, you don't even get on the internet. How is it that you're going to find your soulmate? You have to be curious about the world. And what I mean by this is, Hey, maybe you go to a yoga class. Maybe you go to church. Maybe you try a new hobby or you go on a discord and you start talking to people. There are many ways of being curious about the world and doing so being curious about the world is a way of attracting a soulmate because when you're curious and open, then 
you have the possibility of having somebody show up that is going to reflect whatever it is that you're looking for. Whatever it is that is meant for you is going to be reflected back to you if you have that curiosity, that lightness of being open to the possibility of meeting somebody. And what I mean by open and available is that you need to be single. You need to, you can't be in a relationship and looking for your soulmate because the universe really functions like this. Like when you are open for something and everything is aligned, that something will show up for you. I guarantee it. If you attract a soulmate while you're already in a relationship, I guarantee you that it's going to be troublesome. It's going to be problematic. Everybody's going to have a bad time and I don't recommend it. Oh, and before I forget this last little point is that this is some law of attraction shit. You need to be open to meeting your soulmate and you also need to expect and assume that you're going to meet them. Like you need to be comfortable and you don't go looking for it to the point that you're obsessed because then you give off like these desperate vibes. Like you're so desperate to find somebody. And for some reason, for some cruel reason, that will completely block you from meeting the person because you are just desperate men no this is an entirely different video but desperate energy it just blocks you it blocks you from your blessings because you are working on the assumption that you don't have the thing that you need and when you are working from this feeling and this inner energy of oh i already have what is like what is meant to be mine is already on its way to me you're just happy you're comfortable and that's when you meet the person especially if you do step number five step number five is you need to start a self-improvement journey. You absolutely do. Because guess what? You're not the best version of yourself. You're not, neither am I, and neither is my grandma. All of my grandmas are dead. Nobody, nobody, nobody is the best version that they possibly can be. We all have a room for improvement, whether this is internal, external, in our career, in our emotions, in our behavior, everything can be improved. And if you start a self-discovery journey, if you start a self-improvement journey, I guarantee you that the person that you're looking for is also going to be on a journey like that and you're just going to cross paths. And not only that, but you will also be able to attract somebody better because you will be better. And when we have self-confidence, self-worth, when we have done the work in order to love ourselves and to be people that are lovable. And yes, I know that we're supposed to work off the assumption that everybody deserves love. And part of me is just like, yeah, everybody does deserve love. But I also like, I'm a Capricorn rising and I'm just like, nobody deserves a damn thing and nobody owes you anything, right? Nobody owes you anything. But if you have worked on yourself, if you have matured, if you've developed something, if you developed your inner qualities and you are out there and willing and friendly and open to receiving from the universe a soulmate, then that person is going to find you. I guarantee it. And when you get to know yourself, you have to be really honest about what it is that you want in a partner, what it is that you want in a soulmate, not what society says, not what Instagram tells you you should like, what do you actually like? And again, astrology is a very useful tool for this because what do we like? That's our Venus. Venus tells us the things that we are sensually attracted to, the things that we are visually and the things that stimulate us, right? The chocolate of life, that is Venus. And we can reflect on this and really be very truthful with ourselves because sometimes we think we like something, but it's really like our friends like it, or maybe my mom likes it, or maybe my culture told me that this is what I have to like. If you have maybe Saturn in aspect to Venus, or maybe your, your Venus is in Capricorn or something else, then it would behoove you to really get to know yourself and ask yourself, what are the qualities that you want in the person? What does that person value? And I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh yeah, only focus on inner qualities. Absolutely not. Physical attraction is very important in relationships. It has been shown, like they've done studies on this shit. There are people that can be in love until they're very old. And a huge component of this is them being attracted to each other. So don't let people lie to you and be like, no, just focus on inner qualities. No, you, you, visuals are very important for men and women. I mean, supposedly women don't care that much, but if my husband didn't have nice eyebrows, I don't know what I would do. 
I don't. Get to know what are your non-negotiables? What are the things that you absolutely need in your partner? Like if you absolutely need a partner who is grounded, this is an inner quality. If you absolutely need a partner who has gorgeous eyes, then this is an outer quality. Both of those things are important, inner and outer qualities. And the reason why inner, this, this goes without saying, but inner qualities are important because everybody's going to get old, buddy. Everybody's going to get old and they're not going to look as fine as they do right now when they're 87. But if you maybe value a good sense of humor, then you guys are going to be laughing in your depends when you're 87 and in the nursing home. And it's going to be amazing. It is. And if you go on the self-improvement journey, get to know yourself, improve on your weaknesses and really learn to hone in on your strengths, then the person that you're going to attract is going to be that much better. And they're also going to be leveled up. You're not going to, it's kind of like, what can you afford in life, right? It's when you are younger and maybe you haven't developed yourself and you haven't matured, then maybe you could maybe only attract a partner that "Hmm, I'm not really attracted to them. It's just for company, whatever, right? But once you start working on yourself and you can afford somebody who has also worked on themselves, et cetera, et cetera. I know this video wasn't directly astrology related, but I wanted to make this one before I made the one about soulmates that is astrology related because I was like, I want to give people a chance. I have I have dating tips, guys. I have tips that have to do with finding love because I'm I'm a Venus lady. Venus is conjunct my MC and I just care a lot about these things. If you like these chatty videos, make sure you give me a thumbs up so that I can know that I have the freedom to chat with you on this channel, that you don't necessarily have to have an astrology lesson every single time that I upload, because I'm not going to lie to you, that was what was holding me back. I was like, no, these people need, they need the facts, they need the figures, they need to learn astrology from me, and there's nothing else I could do. So guys, I hope you like it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. I put out videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.